In this chapter, we're going to cover the basics of MIDI recording. We'll continue our work on the original song called Gonna Get You. So far, we've recorded a guitar part and a vocal part. Now, it's time to add drums and a piano part using MIDI and VST instruments. Let's begin with a basic review of MIDI and how it works. MIDI stands for Music Instrument Digital Interface. It's a computer language that allows musical instruments to talk to one another. MIDI was developed in the early 80s and is still in use 20 years later. That's remarkable longevity in the world of computers and a testimony to how well MIDI works. Recording MIDI is fundamentally different from recording audio. For one thing, no sound is recorded, only instructions. The most basic MIDI commands are note on and note off. A MIDI file has a lot in common with an old player piano scroll, so much so that even today most MIDI editors refer to their user interface as a piano roll. When you press the key of a piano, actual sound is generated. By comparison, when you press the key of a MIDI keyboard, all that comes out is a note on command. When you release the key, the keyboard transmits a note off command. This means you need two components to make music with MIDI. You need a controller or input device to generate the commands, and you need a sound module or tone generator to generate the actual sounds. Cubase comes with a powerful arsenal of these sound modules called VST instruments. You can use any MIDI controller to trigger them. For this video, we'll use a traditional keyboard as our MIDI controller. Let's look at an example. Let's begin by selecting some VST instruments. Open the Devices menu and select VST Instruments. The window that opens simulates an empty equipment rack. Click in the black window to display all available VST instruments. Let's select our dedicated drum synthesizer, Groove Agent 1, as our first instrument. Cubase will ask us if we want to create an associated MIDI track. Normally, it would be easiest to click Create, but let's click Cancel so we can walk through the process manually to understand it better. The user interface for Groove Agent 1 opens automatically. We could spend two hours just on this remarkable instrument, but to keep things moving along, let's simply load it up with sounds and keep going. To do this, click in the preset window. I'm going to select the voices called Vinyl Kit, but you can see that hundreds are available. Close Groove Agent 1. Now we have a sound module loaded up with drum sounds. Next, we need a track of MIDI data to trigger those sounds. Open the project menu and select Add Track, then MIDI Track. Leave the count at 1 and click Add Track. A new MIDI track is added to the main project window. You'll notice that the MIDI track and the audio tracks have some subtle differences. They have different track icons, and they have slightly different track controls, but they're more similar than different. Let's route this MIDI track to Groove Agent 1. Now, click on the tab for MIDI inserts and select Beat Designer. This is the primary rhythm composer in Cubase. We'll look at how to use Beat Designer in detail later. For now, let's get it loaded. Click on the Preset Management icon and select Load Preset. Let's select Vinyl Groove 130 since these patterns line up well with the vinyl kit sounds loaded in Groove Agent 1. 
At the bottom of Beat Designer, you'll see four pattern banks. If there's a dot, then that pattern bank has content already loaded. Below the pattern banks are sub-banks laid out like a keyboard. Again, if there's a dot, then that sub-bank is loaded with patterns. To preview a pattern, click the corresponding key and then press play on the transport panel. When you find a pattern or a sub-bank that you like, click this triangle and insert it into your project. Repeat this process until you've created a rhythm track you're happy with. Once your MIDI track is loaded with patterns, you can turn off Beat Designer so it doesn't confuse matters by continuing to play in the background. Here's how our drum part sounds so far. Okay, let's add a piano part. We'll also do this using MIDI and VST instruments, but we're going to try another technique. Steinberg has created a feature called an instrument track, which is a MIDI track and a VST instrument bundled together. To create an instrument track, open the project menu and select Add Track and Instrument Track. When the dialog box opens, Set the count to 1 so we only create a single instrument track. Use the drop down menu under Instrument to select the VST instrument for this track. Let's pick the Halon Sonic SE device and click Add Track. Here again you'll see a new track with a new track icon and slightly different track controls. Use the Edit Instrument icon and select a preset. Let's use the grand piano. Select the instrument track, double click on the name area, and rename it Piano. Do the same for track 3 and name it Drums. OK, let's lay down the piano part. Select the piano track, arm the Record Enable button, and activate the input monitor. I'll have the keyboard player play a few notes on the MIDI keyboard, just to make sure he can hear the tones in his headset, and that all the connections are correct. Here we go! There are a few drop notes, but that's OK. MIDI's easy to edit. Double click on the MIDI performance in the project window to open the editor, also known as the key editor. You'll see a matrix with MIDI notes. The pitches are shown by notes in a vertical position. Its duration is represented by how long the line is. Its velocity, or volume, is shown both by its color and the graph at the bottom of the window. There's a piano keyboard shown vertically along the leftmost margin. You can use the Key Editor toolbar to edit the performance. Move Notes Delete Notes Add Notes and Edit Notes This is only a small example of Cubase's power, but it will do for now. OK, let's move on to Chapter 5 and take a look at EQ, Effects, and the basic mixdown procedure.